Hey everyone, this is Dawn. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a refillable notebook cover with a flap. Okay, so this is the original refillable notebook cover and it has the loops for the pen. So I'm going to make one that has a magnetic closure with a flap. Okay, so let's get started. You'll need some pattern papers. I'm using the Daisy Daisy collection and you'll need a uh, 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that coordinates. Okay, so I have some of this uh, medium weight Gravix chipboard and it's uh, cut at 12 by 12. So I cut off three and a half inches using a larger guillotine trimmer. And I've had questions on how to cut this. I use uh, the Tim Holtz uh, guillotine trimmer, the smaller one, um, to cut the smaller cuts. So I am trimming this down to eight and a half by five and a half. Okay, so I have two pieces at eight and a half by five and a half, and then this other piece I'm going to use for my flap. Okay, so I'm just trimming off um, three and a half inches. So the remaining piece is eight and a half inches. And then I'm going to neaten up that other end because it kind of got crunched. And then I'm going to trim this to two and a half inches. So two and a half by eight and a half will be my flap. So save all those chipboard scraps. There is a use for them. So hang on to them and you can make a flap for your refillable notebook cover. Okay, so now I'm going to trim some patterned paper. All right, so my cover is going to be this uh, piece with the clover background of all the daisies. And I'm going to trim this down to 10 inches and then I'll cut it in half. So you'll need two pieces cut at 6 by 10 for your covers. And then you'll need another piece of the same pattern for your flap. Okay. So I'm going to bring this in and trim off the zip strip. And then you'll need a three by 10 piece. So I'll trim off two inches. And you're good to go. So I should mention that uh, this idea was uh, given to me by a viewer, Debbie Schroeder. She asked about a flap enclosure for this uh, notepad. So I took her idea and ran with it and decided to add some magnets to close. Okay, so your inside piece is going to be 12 by eight and a half, and then you'll need a piece for your flap closure, which will be the remaining. So you'll uh, use that three and a half inch piece and then trim it down also to eight and a half by three and a half. Okay, so now the placement of the magnets. I am going to set up my T-square ruler at the four inch mark on my Versamat. And then I'm going to use three magnets. I've got some really old magnets that are from Basic Gray. And I'll put a link below to um, some better quality magnets. Um, but I decided since they're not that strong that I was going to use three. So I'm just marking evenly on my uh, piece of chipboard here the placement for three mag magnets. And just make sure that when you put them down that they're uh, in the right direction, that you know the positive is going to stick to the negative and um, not uh, repel it rather than magnetize it. So make sure you put them down in the right place. So you can see me trying lots of times, so I want to be sure before I start gluing them down. So for these, I used um, glue dots, but I found that using the art glitter glue to get these to stick works a lot better. So just from the get-go, forget about the glue dots, <laughs> go straight to the art glitter glue. And stick those down. So I'm putting dots of glue on top of them so that when I uh, add my paper on top um, will have some some good adherence and keep those magnets in place okay 
So I am using, instead of the old bonding memories glue that I used in my last video, that's been discontinued by Close My Heart, but this is a good match. This is um, Zig uh, Wide Tip Glue, and you can get it on Amazon, and it's a good uh, substitute for the bonding memories, and it works just fine. So I am putting tons of it on my um, piece of chipboard here. And then I'm going to lay my cover piece down. So butt that one edge up to the raw edge of the chipboard and let the right side hang over the edge, okay? So I'm just making sure I'm getting everything adhered. And the next important tool that you'll need is a bone folder, okay? Close My Heart doesn't make this anymore. I'm very sad because I love this bone folder, but, um, I found a substitute on Amazon. Make sure that um, you get a, a real bone folder or a Teflon bone folder. The plastic ones don't work. They're not very good, okay? So don't go cheap. Um, it's worth the investment. Get yourself a good bone folder. Okay, so we're going to miter the corners, all right? So if you fold uh, this one edge in on the diagonal against that corner and then press down around it using your bone folder and add some glue and then roll the edge okay pick up the whole piece of chipboard and roll it towards you and you'll get those that nice finished rolled edge with your paper you don't want to crease you want it to roll around the edges and then add some glue wait for it to dry and then you can move on to the next one so miter this corner bring that corner in diagonally, press it down with your bone folder, add some glue, make sure you get a nice bond, and then roll your edge, okay, and add some glue, and then you can do the next edge. So it does dry quickly, but you will be waiting for glue to dry before you can move on. So, and then glue the next edge down. And then your cover's done, okay? So I'm just pressing down around those magnets to make sure I've got a nice smooth adherence. Okay, now we can do the back cover. And I'm making sure that I'm going to be gluing it down properly. So I'm testing it out first to figure out the placement. And then I'll go ahead and glue everything down. So I've sped this up, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the video just so that you can see the process. Um, I went ahead and mitered the corners of this one and did it the same way as uh, the covers are usually done. Um, however, you don't really have to miter the corners on this one um, because you're going to do that flap. So you could cut that edge uh, right against the chipboard. And so instead of cutting it at six inches, you could cut it at five and a half inches and then you don't need to miter the corners and then you just bring the bottom and the top edges. You just roll those up. And so both edges would be raw. Um, it's, it's totally your call. I went ahead and, and uh, mitered the edges and did it this way. But in the end, it's going to be covered up. And you'll see what I mean in, in a few minutes. Your call. So, okay, I'm rolling the edges. The top and the bottom you still need to do. So you want to roll these. And then miter the corner, optional on this piece. <laughs> and then roll your edges around. I love this Daisy Daisy paper. It's bright, happy colors, spring colors. It's available um, until the end of March. 
it is selling quickly though. So if you if you want just the paper, there are stickers. Um, you can get the paper pack with stickers. Um, they are selling quickly, so I don't expect them to be available until the end of March. I think they'll sell out before then. Okay, so now we're going to do the flap, and exactly the same way. I, I tested it first to make sure the placement of my paper, and then I'm gluing it down and mitering the corners. Now this one, you do have to have your corners mitered and roll all three edges. So that inside edge is raw. It's going to fold over. It's going to fold from the back cover over the front. Okay, so we'll get these edges rolled and adhered. I feel like seeing the, the process a few times, it, it helps to get it down. I know it's going to make the video a little bit long, but I, I think it's it's good to have the whole process in there so you can see how it's done and then you can make your own. And once you start making these, they're addictive. <laughs> they're so much fun to make. Okay, so that's how everything's going to sit. And now we can put everything together. So I found this um, book binding tape on Amazon. It's from a company called Gaffer Power and it comes on these great big rolls. Okay, so you can get, um, there's white and brown and black and I believe navy blue. Um, so you can choose your color and it comes on a great big roll and you'll be able to make lots and lots of notepads with it. Okay, so I'm cutting off a piece at 10 inches, give or take. And then I'm going to lay it down sticky side up. And I'm using the grid on my Versamat to kind of figure out the placement so it's straight. Now, this is a, a one and done, and it's pretty critical. So make sure that your uh, notepad covers are even on the top and the bottom across from each other. And then you want to lay them down, leaving about three quarters of an inch in between, okay? Now, if you don't get it straight, don't worry about it because there's a fix for it coming up, okay? So they don't have to be precisely straight. Okay, now I'm gonna cut off another piece of bookbinding tape at 10 inches. Stuff is really sticky, <laughs> so it's kind of fussy to work with, but it's good stuff, it, it works. It's not as thick as the uh, sticky back canvas, but that's not available anymore. So this is a good fix, a, a good uh, match for that. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same thing with the, uh, the back cover and that flap, all right? Now, in retrospect, I would have left a little bit bigger uh, gap because you do have to be mindful of that uh, notepad taking up space, but this worked. So you might wanna leave a little bit more than three quarters of an inch in your gap there, okay? All right, now here's how you fix anything that's not straight as far as the placement of your uh, book binding tape. It's by using shimmer trim, okay? So you can place this down and it can go uh, you know, just a little bit off so that uh, it looks straight and you're covering up like more on the right side than the left side and then it looks, everything is straight. Okay, so you're going to need four pieces of shimmer trim. Actually, you're going to need five, but uh, that'll be coming out for this part. You'll need four. So again, I'm using the grid on my Versamat to make sure that everything is straight. I know my verse mat isn't laying on my desk straight, but I'm using the lines on it um, to get everything straightened out. So what you're seeing on the video, um, it might look a little wonky, but I'm getting it down straight. <laughs> so just use those, those grid lines. So I'm covering up the seams of where the book binding tape meets the patterned paper. You can choose whatever colors of shimmer trim you want. 
I like the black. Okay, so all those edges are covered. So now we need to put down our magnets so that the flap will connect with the cover. Okay. So I'm just kind of figuring out where everything is and then I'm going to take the magnets and stick them to the ones that are already on the cover. Okay. And then I'm putting a dot of glue closing the cover, picking it up, and then it leaves a, a spot on that inside cover where I can put more glue and then adhere that magnet. So they're placed correctly and they'll stick to each other. And if you use a larger magnet, the process will be a little bit easier. And then we'll just get all those magnets placed. And then we're ready to put our inside piece in. Okay, so this is the piece that is cut at eight and a half by 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. And it's the same process as the covers. So I'm just using a, a whole bunch of this uh, zig glue. And then we'll glue that piece down and it can overlap the right side where that um, bookbinding tape is. Okay, now this other piece, I'm going to go ahead and put it down on top of that flap and it's going to overlap some of the uh, gingham paper that's already down and that's good because you want an extra layer. So I'm just putting some dots of glue on top of the magnets just so that they'll stay put and they'll stay in place. And then we'll put that another piece of gingham down and let it overlap. because so you want that place where the, the binder, the, the, the binding is on that uh, flap. You want it to be as strong as possible. So having a double layer of the paper there with the um, book binding tape makes it strong because it'll have a, a lot of motion and action so you don't want it to wear down because you want to be able to use this over and over again okay and then the seam where the two pieces of pattern paper meet i don't want those that area to start coming up so i'm covering up, it up with um, a piece of shimmer trim to make sure it stays put and then when you get your pad of paper in there, most of that's going to be covered up anyway. So it's going to look just fine. Okay, now let's make a pocket for the left side. All right, so I'm cutting a piece at five by five. This is the uh, clover cardstock and then putting it in and cutting it corner to corner to get a nice triangle. And then I'm cutting two pieces at one inch by four and a half inches. And then I'll put those back into my trimmer and I'm scoring at a half an inch. Okay. And then I'm going to cut another piece of cardstock at four inches by nine inches. And this is gonna be the sleeve to tuck the pad of paper in. Okay. So now we're gonna make the pocket. So First thing, I'm going to use some washi tape on that edge so that it doesn't get crunched and messed up when you uh, tuck things in and out of the pocket. It's kind of, it protects the edge by putting a piece of washi on it. So I'm just rolling that around the edge. This is some really old, retired, um, close to my heart washi tape. But just go check your stash. You probably have a whole bunch of different choices and just pull some that'll coordinate. So then I'm folding those two one inch strips in half along the scored line and I'm using some score tape. Okay, so I'm just kind of creating a, a 
some dimension to that pocket so it's easier to get in and out of it. So instead of having it flat against uh, the cart, the uh, the inside of the um, notepad cover, it's going to be bumped up just a little bit. So I'm that's what this, uh, this folded piece does is gives a little bit of dimension. So I'm putting them down with score tape and then trimming off the little excess there. And then I'll put more score tape down on the outside. So you want the fold of those two pieces to be towards the outer edge. And cover them with score tape. And then you can put the whole thing down in that lower left corner. And then just press everything down with your bone folder. And then you have a pocket. Okay, so now I'm gonna cover the top portion of this notepad with some pretty paper. So I'm gonna use the other side with the smaller daisies. So I'm cutting that at five inches by two inches. And then I'll glue that down using the zig. And either I cut my strip a little bit too long or these notepads aren't quite five inches across, but I need to trim off a little bit of excess there before I roll it around. Okay. I'll just roll that and press it down. Now your notepad is pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna create the sleeve. So I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock that's nine by four, and I'm gonna put it right up to the top of that notepad against the back of it there. And then I'm gonna roll the edges around. You don't want them to be pressed down super tight because you want enough room to be able to pull that pad in and out. So rolling it gives a little bit extra dimension there. Okay, so I'm gonna use a whole bunch of score tape because this is your device and you want it to stay put. Now, again, this is a one and done. So getting it all ready to put down and just figure out the right placement and press it down. And then I like to pull the notepad out and then go in and press it with my bone folder. Make sure everything is adhered. Okay. That's our magnetic closure. Now to protect those corners there, I'm going to use some of these metal corners and you can get all different kinds of designs on Amazon. I like these smooth ones. And you just pop them on the corner there and then hammer them down and give them a a good bang there so that they <laughs> stay put. So hammer hard, get them down. And same thing with the other corner. You just put them in place and then hammer them down. Okay, so now our notepad is done. Let's make the pen that goes with it pretty. So these are the RSVP pens from Pentel. So you can unscrew the, um, the ink from the base and then roll up a piece of, of pattern paper and push it in there and then you can put the ink back in. So I'll make a list of all the supplies that I used to create this project and with links in the description below and you can do a little shopping and again the uh, Daisy Daisy uh, pattern paper is available until the end of March. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And then you'll be able to find all of my videos. And I'll put an extra link to the original refillable notepad video in the description below. Thanks for watching.